So what I ultimately want to do is cut this slab into pieces and then glue them around the base here and then glue another piece that's going to go up like that and then carve it so that the pieces going around it are going to look like gnarled roots gripping the block. I can tell that that is going to be some gorgeous grain there. I think I'd like to use this piece here for the part that's actually going to cradle the bulb. Olive wood by far is one of my, my favorite woods to carve. The tricky part with this, the trunk of the tree is going to have to be hollowed out in order to be able to run the wiring up. So I got to make sure I carve a channel for that before I do the glue up. I need to cut out a channel on both sides to run the wiring through the lamp. So I'm going to do that on a table saw as opposed to using a router. Gluing up the, essentially the trunk of the tree here, painting on some traditional wood glue here, and then clamp that, get that set. That's going to be our balancing point right here, our base. I'm going to let this cure overnight. I'm going to have to bore a hole through it in order to be able to run the electrical wiring up through the lamp. I have the mass of the wood together in the general shape that I'm looking for. This is always probably <laughs> kind of the most intimidating part of it because as you can tell this is where it's the roughest, ugliest, clunkiest it's ever going to be. Usually at this point is where I'm wondering is can I make it look like the picture I have in my head. But it's also kind of the fun part too because it's a challenge. So first things first, since we are dealing with that channel where the wiring is going to have to run, I roughly marked where that's at. Obviously, I don't want to carve into that. So now I'm going to outline the general profile of what I'm looking for, the silhouette of the tree. My general process is I'll sketch one outline, I carve that, sketch a little more, remove that, keep doing that, keep honing it in until I take away all the excess and basically what I got in my mind starts to come out here. As far as dust collection goes, at best I have a fan. There's no real way to hook up a vacuum to this. So I've gotten pretty good at holding my breath for a long period of time, breathing a breath of fresh air and coming back. Still end up with some interesting uh, sawdust in my nose, but for the most part, it keeps me from hacking up a lung. Still doesn't look anything like a tree just yet. Honing in a little bit more on the rough shape. I think I want to start laying out the, the roots before I take too much off because then that gives me a lot more options for doing some like high angles on roots if I have more wood to work with. When I was in Texas, I floated down a river and they had these cypress trees that were along the banks and they were like six, seven hundred years old and they've got all these gnarled roots that just overlap and interconnect and it was just a curtain of like living wood. I don't know, really beautiful. So I kind of want to capture a similar aesthetic of that. So I intend for this whole tree to have it looking like there are like tendons that are going over. So it'll give a lot of texture and movement to the tree itself. And I want that to extend all the way up. And so it's going to be almost kind of like a reverse root ball at the top that should actually go around the light bulb. Today I'm going to start off by shaping this a little bit more, then I'm going to start carving out some of the roots and that'll be some of the first like real detail work I'm going to start doing on this thing.
I put most of the detail that I want to into this piece. So far it's pretty much come out like I had in my head. A lot of things lined up pretty nicely. I was able to use that natural knot hole and make it actually look kind of like a natural knot hole where a broken stump would have been. I was pretty unsure how this was gonna come out when I first started, so I like the direction it ended up taking. Almost there, but I still have a, a good sized leg of the journey left on it. So I'm using some Danish oil here. Once I've done a couple coats of this and let that dry for a couple days and fully penetrate, then I am gonna go over it again with another coat of the tried and true because the beeswax stays a little bit more on the surface, provides a little more protection, and then you can buff it and it keeps a little more of a sheen. This has been a moment that I really look forward to in any carving project, and that's watching the, the grain just kind of come to life when you put the oil on it for the first time. It's one of the reasons why I also really like olive wood. There's so much grain movement in it. Next piece is installing a threaded pipe nipple. One of these guys. This is the socket that's going to be installed in up here. So this is what we're going to run up through the base and that's going to come out the top. Through there. I went with a dimmable socket, which I really like when I'm using Edison bulbs because then you can turn down or turn up the brightness and you can create different lighting effects depending on whether you want to actually use it as a light source or as more of an accent piece. The olive wood has a nice warm glow to it and the Edison bulb uh, will play into that pretty well. 